Hi guys, my name is Heinrich and welcome to another coffee break with Firm Learning. Today I'd like to talk about the little things. The little things that may not seem important at first sight, but can really make a difference how you are perceived in your work environment. Personally, I like to call these things hygiene factors. So if you wonder what a hygiene factor is, let's think about a great hotel. It is super luxurious, a great entrance hall. You have a personal butler who brings you your food, your luggage and everything else you may need. So at first hand, it might seem that this is just an amazing experience and a great hotel to be at. And actually imagine the following thing. You're going to the bathroom and you'll find the toilet not being cleaned. There are hairs of potentially previous guests in your shower and it just does not seem clean and nice as you would expect. What would be the impression of this hotel now? Well, for sure, never mind all the great uh, butler services and luxurious wines and great luxurious entrance halls, your experience, your impression of that hotel will be awful. And this is due to something that is called hygiene factors. These are factors that if they are there by themselves, they do not make a great impression. But if they're not there anymore, if they're gone, then this is super bad and your customer, your professional, your work colleague will just have a very bad impression of you. Just as the hygiene in a hotel, the hotel may be as great as this might be, but if the toilet, the bathroom is not hygienic, then it's just a bad hotel, right? And there are similar things like that in the workplace as well. There are these little things that if you do them, that by itself will not be great. Nobody will say, hey, this Tony guy, he's so great because he's doing these things, right? But if you don't do them, then that actually might be perceived as unprofessional, as not knowing the rules of the game, as just not being part of the culture, as just not knowing how to behave in a good and professional manner. And you don't want that, right? So let's go over five things like that, that are little things, but I believe really make a difference. And these are some lessons that I really learned from my time at McKinsey, where these things are just perceived to be super basic. You just need to follow these kind of professional standards. But this is not just true for consulting. This is true for other industry firms like that, where these things are just important and you do not want to stand out by not doing these things right. So let's start with five tips that really make a difference in the workplace and that you should just get right in order to not be perceived in a negative way. The first tip is about how you write your emails. And let me start with a little story here. A friend of mine recently started working with a large venture capitalist fund here in Germany. And he told me the story and I just thought it was funny. So let me just share it, right? Because when he was kind of applying for the job and getting his first interviews, of course, the tone was super friendly. He was writing these emails and getting these super nice and friendly responses and so on. And then suddenly after he got hired, and kind of he wrote the very first email in the same style he was always writing them. Then the first reply he got from this direct supervisor is, please, and, and let's just call this guy Tony, uh, please Tony, from now on only in bullet points. I only want to have bu emails in bullet points, right? And, and this sound might sound a bit uh, stupid and ridiculous, but I think this is really to the point and important. In work life, nobody wants to read through paragraphs of text of lots and lots of words of super long email of a page and longer and so on. Nobody wants to read these kind of emails. If you write an email, make sure that it's written in bullet points, at least always if it goes kind of beyond a couple of sentences, right? But if you have several thoughts that you want to share, never just write text, but write it in bullet points. Each bullet point should consist of one argument, one thought, one point that you want to bring forward. Be concise, be to the point. Don't write fluff in your emails. Make it crisp and clear what you want. And this is just helpful to everybody because otherwise you are just a waste of time, right? Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to read these kind of super long emails. My second tip also regards to emails, but not what you write in them, but rather documents, attachments that you do. What you see super frequently in business is that people are sending around attachments with the name of something like copy of, copy of, file, da, 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 uh, blah, 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 XLS or something like that, right? So basically you have an attachment with a name that has just not been edited, that just has been exported, copied from whatever other program, and you don't have a clue at all what is in the attachment just by reading the name. Guys, this is just super unprofessional. You cannot work like that. You cannot just send these attachments with these gibberish names like that, right? I mean, 
imagine all these people needing to drag and drop your attachment maybe in their file structure and their file system and now they need first to look into it and then to give it a name how much more convenient would it be to everybody if just you from the beginning would have given a clear and crisp name to that attachment that basically the person would directly know what is in the file but then could just drag the file in his own file system without needing to edit it or to do any other changes to the file name be professional name your attachments in a way that makes sense guys otherwise it's just unprofessional don't do that don't be that guy do it this way and you'll be fine, just fine third point is about your availability and here of course the culture might be different from business to business so this may be not related to your specific business to your specific organization but from my experience this is something that is just very well received and widely appreciated and the situation is are you available if your colleague your team lead your supervisor another person you work with wants to reach out to you right and especially via phone and and personally in my organization where i currently work i know two or three people if i try to call them i just know that they will not pick up at that moment right they are just not available on the phone i will not be able to know just call them and reach them and this is just annoying right maybe i just want to talk about something with them i would like to discuss a thought i have there's something maybe super urgent and important i'd like to address but these people are just not approachable and that's a problem and in organizations what usually tend to happen is that these people actually are called less frequently than others they are consulted less than other colleagues if i want to know something want to discuss something i rather call the guy who i know will pick up right and will let me know what's going on and if he has some time for me or maybe later but if you're the guy who never picks up his phone maybe even doesn't want to because he feels bothered feels like this is not the best use of my time or whatever you know i will just not reach out to these people anymore and in the long term and in the short term this might be nice helpful you might feel like you have more time to do your other things but in the long term this will really hurt your reputation and your standing organization so do not do that and what i would advise always make sure if somehow possible to pick up and if you do not have time at the moment just let the guy know sorry right now is not a good time let me call you later let's call this evening let's have a call tomorrow or if you really cannot uh, pick up the phone right now then at least directly write a short text and say uh, sorry can't talk right now we'll, we'll call you later right but be responsive answer let the other person know what is going on and how she can reach you because usually if somebody calls you there's something important that the person wants to discuss so don't just flake right don't just duck away from the call but take it and make sure you're reachable for the important people in your organization the fourth tip is about how you handle meetings and meeting invites and sure this might also depend on the organization and maybe at your place it's very different than some rates but usually what what i observe what is widely appreciated in almost all organizations is making good use of calendar invites of your uh, outlook invite calendar system or the, the the icloud system or whatever you might use right but make use of that so if you have a meeting make it a good habit of yours of always sending out a calendar invite to make sure that that person directly has it in their calendar because usually what will happen and this person will needs to make the invite the entry in the calendar himself which of course takes time and is annoying and especially if you're hosting larger meetings with, with more than only one counterpart then every person needs to do that by himself instead of you just doing it once and then everybody has it directly in the calendar right and of course there are other benefits to that as well if you reschedule everybody directly sees it um, what you should of course also do is always enter uh, a location right if it's uh, kind of out of office enter the exact address where the other person is supposed to go don't just enter the name of the hotel or the name of the conference room that you would like to go to because it's just very annoying and completely unprofessional if the person just finds that and then needs to look it up on google or somewhere else uh, just to know where you actually intend to be right and especially now imagine a situation where you sit in a car maybe have your phone connected to the navigation system you expect that uh, the invite has this info you click on your calendar you open the invite and then just to find that you cannot just click on the address and it will directly guide you in the navigation to go there which you would have expected and you wouldn't have hoped for but now that you just find the name of hotel that now you need to independently google and look out for 
I mean, again, guys, this is annoying. This is unprofessional. Don't be that guy. Don't do that. Always send out invites to make it easier for everybody who is supposed to participate. And then also make sure that all the relevant meeting information is actually included in this invite to make the life easier for everybody who is involved. Now to my tip number five. And this is about how you actually handle meetings. And one thing that I believe is really crucial, but that many people don't do, is setting up proper agendas. If you set up a meeting, if you invite somebody, maybe even just a colleague you would like to talk to you about uh, a few topics, always make sure that in the invite or in the email that you write him in advance, they are kind of in a bullet style format, the things that you would like to talk to, the things that you would like to address. You know, meetings are just super annoying. If there's an invite, nobody really knows what it's supposed to be all about. Nobody has an understanding what the outcomes are supposed to be of the meeting. And then you're sitting in the meeting with the meeting organizer and often even the organizer himself hasn't clearly thought that out. And then very often these meetings are just completely unproductive. So again, please do your very best to prepare. Let the other person know what the meeting is supposed to be all about to also give the other person a chance to prepare for himself, right? Because then the likelihood of the meeting being a success and yielding results that are valuable for everybody and being a good investment of time for everybody involved are just much higher. Do that and everybody will be happy and you will just create a much more professional experience in your organization. So let me just recap five tips today, little tips, little things where I believe though that these things really make a difference. First is about how you write emails. Make sure that they are in the bullet form type. Write bullet points, don't write long text. Nobody wants to read a long email. Second point, make sure that you name your attachments properly, that people can just pick up the attachment, know what's in, can directly store it in their whole file system without any trouble, anything that's just kind of annoying and nobody knows what's in there. Third tip is your availability. Make sure that people can reach you. If you're called, pick up or at least write a short text letting the person know that right now is not a bad, not a good time, but you're of course happy to reach out later. Be available to the important people in your organization. Fourth is about how you handle meeting invites. Make sure that you always send such an invite and make sure that all the relevant information is included in it, especially the location and of course also for instance dial-in information for a tele telephone conference or anything like that. And last but not least, meeting agendas. If you talk to somebody, set up a meeting with an individual or a group, make sure that you let know the people in advance what is expected of them, what the agenda is, what you hope to get out of the meeting. Five things. You may believe these are only little things, and you're right, they are. And probably if you do that, it's not like everybody will walk around and say, uh, this Tony guy is the greatest guys of all, right? But if you don't do these things with a high likelihood, this will fall back negatively on you. It's like a hygiene factor. It's like the toilet that is not cleaned up properly. Get that right and make a good thing out of that. Thank you, guys. Thank you a lot. So guys, thank you for watching this new episode of Firm Learning. If you enjoyed it, I would very much appreciate if you could just subscribe here below to the channel. I have many more content pieces lined up for in the next weeks and months. I would love you to be there and listen to that. Of course, if you have any comments, any feedback, let me know. Also write in the comment section below. I'd love that. Have a good day and thank you for watching.